If God is good, why is there so much suffering in the world? This is probably one of the most difficult questions for Christians to answer. Why can't God just stop things like tsunamis and earthquakes and sickness like the coronavirus and suffering and even death? Why couldn't a perfect God make a perfect earth? Well, he did. Look at what Genesis 1 verse 31 says. Then God saw everything that he has made, and indeed it was very good. Everything was very good. So what went wrong? We will have to look a bit further in Genesis to find out precisely what happened. When Adam and Eve was in the Garden of Eden, God commanded Adam in Genesis 2. The Lord commanded man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So then one day, Eve was in the garden when the snake approached her. Let's catch up with this story in Genesis 3. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Did God really say that? No, he did not say that they cannot touch the fruit. Well, then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So Eve listened to the serpent, and she ate of the fruit. And then she also gave some of the fruit to Adam, and he also ate. Well, they made the wrong choice. When they disobeyed God, they chose to disobey his command. From their own free will, they made this choice. Now remember, there were lots of perfectly amazing fruit trees to eat from. yet. They chose to disobey. On that day, sin, death, suffering, sickness, and every evil thing entered the world. God does not want us to be puppets to simply love him because we have to. God wants us to love him from a free choice. It was God's plan from the beginning to allow man to choose for himself. Well, Adam and Eve fell. They chose to sin. But yet God offered them forgiveness and promised them in the book of Genesis already that he will send a saviour who will one day bring an end to sin and death. See, God is good. Today we look at the world and we see all the horrible and terrifying things. We wonder how a God of love would allow this type of suffering. Yet it is the love of God that caused him to send his son into the same sinful and wicked world so that those who believe in him can be saved from sin and death. God is trustworthy and kind. God is good and powerful. Yet, he will not force you to love him or to believe in him. But remember, God hates sin. He is so very perfect and pure and good that he simply won't allow any sin in heaven. We read in Romans 8, that the earth groans and labors under the consequences of sin. Sin also separates us from God. But God made a perfect plan. I am sure that you know what this plan was. Yes, he sent his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins on the cross. He died to take the punishment for our sin. He died and then he conquered death by rising again on the third day. He paid the price for the sin of the world. For the sin you did and I did. For the sin that we, just like Adam and Eve, chose to do every day. But he is willing to forgive you and save you from everlasting punishment if you will repent and put your faith in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He is in heaven, busy preparing a place for you. In John 14, verse 2 to 3, we read, In my Father's house are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So Jesus is in heaven, busy making a place for you and me. And there we will find no more crying, and no more death, and no more suffering. He desires to give mankind a second chance. Now you and I have a choice. Are we going to accept the love of God and the forgiveness He's offering? Or will we continue to sin and add to the suffering around us by participating in lying and stealing and other sinful things? Or will we look to God to rescue you and give you a new life?